All right. So here we are. Uh, we're streaming live tonight, and I have a little uh, explanation about the live in just a moment. But just welcome to everybody. Thank you so much for being here. This is me and Susan Lynn doing polyterology, and we are live streaming on both of our channels. And you know what, Susan, I think it's a good thing we're live streaming on both our channels because I think my little screw up with the post means there's, I don't see anybody in the chat yet. I know, <laughs> might, right? I know. They, they might be on, uh, let me go to my, I think I can go to my YouTube. I have it muted. No, that's the old one. Where yeah. Is, I don't know. I'm trying to find on my channel because I'm determined to get this. Uh, live stream there we go there's that and let me make it big and let me look at the there we go now i can see the chat over there okay people are coming okay. in yeah and i'll just keep that muted very good there we go hello secondhand news with jill debbie kane beth mullen janet p renee miss charlotte Teresa ford Maura, blah, 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 blah. okay everybody i can't keep up with it it's great Good to cool. see you guys. So you might be seeing this on my channel or you might be seeing this on Colleen's channel. The software that we use has a new feature that allows Colleen, who's really the host. Colleen is the one who's hosting me on her channel, but now we can simulcast. And so it it's great because my viewers get to come on um, and see this live, even though I'm on Colleen's channel. So thank you. And if you are here from my channel, please check out Colleen's channel and consider uh, subscribing because she really does some amazing political um, accurate predictions. We, we did this a couple of weeks ago and we were just chatting and we had the best time together. And I was like, let's do this again. So uh, it's just fun to chat politics, right? Um, so here we are. Yeah, here we are. And um, that chat, though, I, I got to tell you, I think that that chat was led by some higher beings because I don't know, some of the things that was coming out of my mouth, I was like, wait, do I really think that? What? <laughs> so that, that was fun for me. Channeling. Welcome yeah, that was fun for me. One, one fun so for me. You guys can find that video on Colleen the Cool Crone on her channel. Uh, yep. you, it's a, about three weeks ago, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think it was um, earlier this month, basically. Yeah. It was just a lot has happened. Yeah, really. A lot has happened. This whole uh, month of March has just been wacky. I'm just trying to bring up my I know. Um, Anastasia. Yeah. There was a mix up with with there was a mix up with the time. Uh, the yes. host did say 9 p.m. Eastern time, so we're sorry about that. Um, we're just kind of lucky to be here, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. With you. So I'm yeah. sorry if you guys are watching this after the live, and please don't yeah. get upset with us the, about the typo. We're human. Um, yeah. And, Oh, hey, everybody. Good to see you guys, uh, Kevin and Kim and everybody. Um, I also wanted to say, yes, uh, Colleen does see the chat. The way this works is all of you guys are in the same chat for us. Maybe not for you, but for us, because we're on the same back end of the video uh, kind of dashboard. We're seeing the whole chat. It's really interesting, actually. Um, yeah. we'll see if you guys like it or not. I did it with Allie yesterday and people, and we didn't explain it well enough. And people were like, basically like, what the heck just happened? So, um, so let us know if you guys like this or it is confusing. Yes. Okay. So, you know, uh, you're going to see other, other people do this because it's, it's, um, it's just a nice way for both channels to have participate in the live, but you let us yeah. know what you like. We're talking yeah. about politics, people. Politics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Curious how this works with the chats. I clicked on Colleen's chat, but it stopped after a handful of chats. It's all happening on Susan's chat. Oh, that's interesting. Melissa Miller. That's it interesting. It depends on the number of people in the chat. It, you mm. know what I mean? I, I happen to just have a little bit bigger channel, so there might be mm -hmm. more people in my chat. And, and uh, my people are like political, like, fiends you guys are always up to learn more about the politics and colleen's are too you guys really need to check out her channel she's got a great channel thank you 
Thanks this is much. on StreamYard, yes. We're using StreamYard on the back end, yes, you guys. You guys are just seeing it on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. And we might have someone join us. Her name is Cleo. Uh, we're junkies. I know, Prairie. I'm telling you, uh, Colleen and Cleo and I, we just sat and talked politics yeah. for a we long just, time. Yes. It was a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm hoping fun. that it's going to be the same thing. You know, just chill. We're going to just talk politics, but we're not going to be like, trying to break our next to answer every question because we just want to kind of see where it leads us. That's what, what Colleen was talking about. It's kind of like spirit got involved and was like, you know, guiding us. Yeah. Uh, Cause I, I, I mean, I did like maybe three cards and after a while I was just like, Oh, screw this. I'm just going to talk. <laughs> cause it, cause it was just not um, that the cards were too late. You know, we were already on to, you know, 14 other topics. So it was just kind of silly to try to go back. So I just yeah. said, you know, screw that up. So I did, I did get, uh, I did put together a few uh, questions to get us started. And the first one, I think I'm going to come back to that. Uh, let's see. Let me see what we are on. All... And you guys can put questions in the chat too. Okay. Oh. The thing I found out was I can't star the question. One of the things I can't do as a co-host is I can't bring the questions in myself. Oh, okay. Can you actually click the star though? I can't. Oh, I can't. And I, you could make me a co-host somehow, but we'll do that later. That let's I get busy. I, I thought I did that before we even did the thing. No, that was the stream thing. That was the other um, thing. Hang yeah. on. It's okay. It's okay. There. We'll. we'll while you're doing that, I will um, look All at right. the chat. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just going to check out the chat because I think my questions, even though I put them together three days ago, I think they're old already. I know. That's right. That's how things are going. <laughs> okay. That's All right. Good. Oh, here's one. Here's a good one. Um, let's see if we can put this one up. So what's going on with the grand jury foreman in Georgia? She Is she already regretting doing those interviews? Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, let's see what's going on with her. Does anybody remember her name? I think it was Christy something or Christy. Wow. I can't remember anybody's name. Half the time I can't remember my own. You know, I don't think she re regrets it. As a matter of fact, the guides are reminding me that I saw other jurors come came forward. Um, as a matter of fact, I did it. It's included in one of my videos. Remember the guy, did you see that Colleen, the guy that came forward and says, all I know is after this is said and done, America will not be divided anymore. Yeah, I heard it. I wasn't really watching the video, but I heard like three different videos where people were quoting that because it, the, the point is that as this stuff comes out, yeah, if you believe what you're hearing in the, in some of the news about the revelations, not necessarily everything in the news, but if you understand what's being revealed, it's devastating. It's not good for our country. It's not good. I mean, no bueno, you know, the Monsieur Larange is bad, bad, bad for the country. He is yeah. bad. So, but is she regretting doing the interviews? What do you I think? I, I think no. I think she enjoyed her little 15 minutes of fame. I think she thought that was really cool. I mean, her her attitude was actually kind of sweet, wasn't it? I mean, she was just like a little. <laughs> she was kind of naive, was, maybe. Yeah, yeah. She was kind of naive. She was, but she was sweet. She didn't mean any harm at all. Yeah, In fact, I agree. She, she meant to give us a warning, uh, you know, yeah. that there's going to be a lot coming out from this. So even though she didn't say what the later person did that boy if you heard all this stuff you'd know that he yeah. really could be behind bars you know i thought she she kept her cards close to her vest as as best she could i think that it's just amazing that she was fangirling on you know who was it giuliani that's wild that she was like just wanted to right. shake his hand you know things like that so no i don't think she regrets it at all because i don't think she's swimming in the pool where she sees herself as being a part of the bigger picture. I think she was just take, bringing this from her very personal experience of having been the four person on this very, very important jury. So that's, I don't think she regrets it at all. 
So some rock star says, I think some people were concerned she was a secret Trumper trying to sabotage the investigation. Well, you know, if she wanted to sabotage it, she could have, but she stayed right in the narrow lane. Georgia has mm -hmm. very different rules, apparently, about a lot of things. They have great RICO mm -hmm. laws that majority mm -hmm. of states don't have. Uh, and they have very specific rules about what jurors can say and not say. And I think it might be a little bit wider than other other states. And she stayed in her lane. You know, she could have sabotaged it. Sure, she could have. She yeah. could have done that, but she didn't. I I don't know. She's an was to me. She was a little bit odd, <laughs> but that's just me. Um, yeah, I I thought she was a little bit odd, but you know, um, what? Well, who knows? Um, but I don't think she regrets it, and I don't think we regret it because I like the fact that these other jurors came out and said. Uh, th this is incredible. What you're going to find out that we know already is going to change everything. And that made me feel better personally. That made yeah. me feel better. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we had one person, I just have to show this. This is a hilarious comment. So I hear that flying over the Waco <laughs> rally, the banner. <laughs> Yeah, he. I would have chipped should. in for that for the gas money for that plane. I would have chipped right? in. Right, I would have too. So that brings up a good question. I think <laughs> how how is that? I know the people in Waco are really upset. They they're not loving the Trump. They're not loving that he came there at all. But I mean, the way I see this, he has like a very narrow window of time in which to do anything. To, to put things out in the public, because I think very quickly, someone's going to put a gag on or uh, order on that man. Yeah, Somebody's yeah. going to say, you got to stop it. You got to shut it. You got to block that pie hole because we cannot have you making these dangerous statements right. out in the public. So in this teeny tiny little window of time that he has to be all crazy, what do we think the Waco appearance what kind of an impact is that going to have on his people, on the MAGA people? Are they going to be excited or upset or whatever? See, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I think he's pretty much, it's like spirit is showing me fireworks that, that don't go off. You know, we call them duds, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now I think the Waco thing was specifically a message for a certain type of MAGA supporter and one that would be more of a militia minded or potentially even violent. He was hoping, in my opinion, the guide's opinion, he was, he was talking to those people. He wasn't talking to his, you know, if he was talking to his fan base, he probably could have just done a rally in Florida. Right. Uh, yeah. But Waco is such is is uh wow. How much portent, how much, energy is behind just that name um so he was talking to those people and i don't think i don't think they're listening as much as he thinks they are either so i think he's going to start like you're saying he's got this window of opportunity and he's starting to find out that he keeps pushing the button to get a reaction and there's no reaction it's a dud it's a dud it's a dud yeah and the card that i pulled i got the world i mean this is the end this is the end for him. This is just, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't even make any sense that he would go to Waco. He's not, he, well, maybe he is it's a cult the leader. Davidians. It's the whole thing that the government shot up those people that were holding out. It's meant, it's meant to, they, they're selling these shirts that are anti-government. What does it say? Like something against the state. Um, you know, they want to they want to say that the FBI is after everybody. They're they're trying to change the narrative that the yeah. government is wrong. The government is bad. The government is out. You know, one of those things they say is uh, Matt Gate. Who is it that says that I stand and they they get me. So I protect you. Right. Like I'm the only thing standing between them and you is me. That's what Trump says. So it's this whole narrative right of us against them except for he's turning he's putting the whole united states government as them and citizens as us i just don't think it's working as well as they yeah i heard they were giving away hunting knives i and you know they're made in china um but anyway i don't know 
Oh my I god. Know. Oh my god. I'm looking in the chat here for um oh thank you Vivian and thank you Sherry for for all your help. Um but I'm just looking for questions here. Oh, here we go. Here's a good one. Um when will Mueller's findings become known? Does Jack Smith have the unredacted report and will he use it? Ooh. Oh, I'm sure that Jack Smith has the unredacted report. I would assume Jack Smith has access to everything, including anything that would even be top secret. Um, and if he doesn't have it, I think he can get it. I, I think at this point, the judges understand the importance of this matter. And I mean, like the circuit judges that would maybe be controlling the access to this. Um, but maybe you get something different, Colleen. Um Will he, he's going to use everything. Jack Smith is going to use everything, everything. <laughs> yeah. Jack Smith is definitely going to use the Mueller report because it has to do with all of the charges that were not already leveled against Trump. And I think Jack Smith's going to pull out some of those sealed indictments. I think yeah. those are going to come out into the public via Jack Smith. I think that, um, now they switched the judge, not in Jack Smith's court. I don't know what. Beryl Howell. Yeah, but she's moving out, and another person is coming in, and that's a male judge. But right. that's in. But that's in the case. Is that in the case for Jack Smith, or is that in the case no, for Alvin Bragg? That's, that's the. Um, I can't keep them all straight. I think that's Alvin Bragg's case. I yeah, think. I think so too. Yeah. So then, in that case, I'm going to say that there may be a female judge for Jack Smith. And she is taking no prisoners. She's a feisty person. Yeah, she's yeah, very, yeah. very sure of what she's doing. And I think she is salivating at the idea of getting this case in front of her. It's, I mean, but think of it for lawyers these days. These cases are so juicy. I mean, they're really wrangling with the issues of the Constitution and, yeah. and versus state laws. I mean, it's just a juicy time to be a, an attorney. But I do think that the Jack Smith case in particular and all the indictments that he brings down, I think that this is, um, this is going to bring about the basis of the changes that we need to make to laws uh, in, in many of the states that are involved and federal laws as well. I think Jack Smith's case with Donald Trump, first of all, I think it will be multi-level. I think he will have so many, because I think he's like, why shouldn't we put in everything in the kitchen yes. sink? Yes. Why? What are you afraid of? Is he too sensitive to handle these cases? No, I think we should put them all in. Because remember, he's used to trying war criminals. And I mean, Putin got charged as a war criminal. Yeah. Isn't Donald Trump just, you know, six degrees of separation away from that? Yes. Go, girl. Preach it. So that's what I think. I think Jack Smith is, wow, he's he's going to bring it. He's going to bring big he's stuff. Gonna bring okay, I'm, I'm going to hunt for some more stuff here. If you got more, go ahead. All right. Uh, I can't put it on the screen, but I'll I'll tell you what it is if that... Um, you know, a lot of people are asking about TikTok. If you see just up a little bit at 518, which I don't know mm -hmm. what time it is, your time, that's 318 yeah. probably. Um, Kathy Reagans is asking about TikTok. Um, I don't I don't see a ban, you guys, because here's the thing. It's too big. It's, it's worth too much money. Uh, too many Americans make their livelihood off of TikTok. But I would say this, that it's it's not a safe app. Um I'm not saying that that China's going to break into your phone and steal your money, but what they but if you work for a sensitive place and honestly a sensitive place could even just be the US Postal Service, right? Or it could be a police department or uh, even a school. That that's they're collecting this the guides are telling me the background in the background of this app, they're collecting information about your whereabouts and what you're doing and if you're in a sensitive place on Wi-Fi. That's why they told people you can't use TikTok if you're in certain, you know, government positions. You can't have it on your phone. You can go home, use it on your computer. Maybe you mm -hmm. have a separate phone. Fine. But you, it really is a problem. Um, so, so the solution is, I've seen bandied about, and I think this is really the solution, is that a separate software company like Oracle or something 
is going to offer, and I'm sure when they say offer, they mean we're going to make money off of this, but they're going to somehow separate the back end and keep an eye on it. They're, they're going to be the watchers of that. Now, also, you know, Europe doesn't play. Europe is faster than the United States to ban stuff that they don't think is safe. So China's going to want to work with these people. They're, they would rather have something than nothing. But it, it leads us into the future of we have to be a little more careful. All of us do. China's not our friend. Russia is not our friend. We need to be more careful about um, these things. And the guides are reminding me, do you remember this, Colleen? Wasn't there a cell phone company, Huawei or Huawei, H-U-W-E-I-E, W-E-I, something like that? Mm -hmm. uh, we banned them. They can't even sell those phones in the United States. Mm -hmm. If that's the, yeah. if I had the name right, there's a name of a phone that China makes that that's been banned. And the reason is, is because it had the same spy technology in it. So. Yeah. And actually, TikTok was one of the questions that I was going to ask for my oh, list. Great. Too. Um, so uh, this reader, um, this was Vicki White, uh, one of my subscribers. She wanted to know, is Zuckerberg behind the big push to expel TikTok? Oh, <laughs> you know who would be, in my opinion, the guides just said, you know who is a more a bigger foe to TikTok is YouTube. Because YouTube has shorts and YouTube shorts yep. compete directly with TikTok. And and YouTube shorts, shorts are growing and now they've given uh, YouTube content creators a way to even monetize shorts, which will make people want to do more shorts. So um, I think that uh, I, I personally don't get that Facebook is involved. But what do you get there, Colleen? No, I don't think he's involved at all. But I think it's an interesting thing uh, to have him, um, you know, to have him even come up in our wow. thoughts and our consciousness about yeah. that. Yeah. I think poor Mark Zuckerberg is just having a heck of a time getting everybody to grasp the new name for Facebook. <laughs> Met Meta. Uh, yeah. Prairie Griffin says that it. Facebook has shorts. So I just don't see, I don't, I, I just don't pick up that energy. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, no, I don't no. Know. But I, I do, I do think that it is a big concern and I do think that they will spawn maybe not legislation, but I do think it's going to be sort of a, like a public service announcement arrangement where people are saying, here's the things that you shouldn't do when you're doing social media, you know, like I think a lot more of those, you know, and now, you know, kind of commercials, you know, about and really aimed towards the kind of information that can be released on TikTok. And it is, I do think that it's sad that so many kids are really on it and just giving up information, but I don't know. It's, it's social media. It's it's in our culture now, and it's it is going to be very hard to claw it back from our culture, no matter what the company is. But did you hear any of the? Um, uh, I don't know. I don't remember the gentleman's name, but the big chairman of of TikTok, who looks like he's about thirteen years old, was testifying <laughs> was testifying to Congress. And he was just saying, no, we don't do any of those things. No, the China government doesn't have any of that stuff. No, they've asked us repeatedly and we've said no. And I'm like, do you really, are you asking us to believe that you really are the Boy Scout that you're sitting there pretending to be? <laughs> Come on. I mean, and, and uh, you know, if the shoe were on the other foot, if there was an American testifying to the head of heads of state in China, wouldn't yeah. they also be likewise disingenuous? Yeah. I mean, they would also try to be like, because it's not their government, you know? So, you know, I mean, yes, it's his business and he wants his business to thrive. His business is going to thrive no matter what kind of blockades they put on it, except for outright banning. That would not be good. But he has a point. It's something like 70 million people or something on TikTok that's he has a point. It's a part of it's a part of our our <laughs> culture now. Connie wants you to take her picture down. She's been up for too long. <laughs> yeah, and I and I I'm trying to go back and find it. Uh, oh, sorry, wait, I can see. I can see the stars. Can I star? Let can me see. You? If I if you start it, you can find it here. Uh, 
Oh, heck, oh, I don't think I trip can. to that. Can I can't. I, I think I started. You did start. There it I, is. I yes. Okay. Okay, it. Connie. There you go. Whoops. There you go. There you go. Sorry about that. Right, I'm very bad at this. I'm just really bad. I did see something else. Uh, what's this say? Oh, no, not that. Okay, well, I'll go on to one of uh, these other ones. So Ruthie H. wanted to know if the New Hampshire Republican governor, Chris Sununu, is thinking about running for president, how will he do against his fellow nominees if he runs? And I don't know if Sununu is a Democrat or Republican. <clears throat> Maybe I can just find that out really I, quick. I don't either, but I heard, yes, he's going to run. Uh, yeah. Right now, the, his energy, his thinking right now is, yes, I'm going to run. Uh, he feels that the field is wide open for him. He must be running either as a Republican or an independent. Yeah. Is He's he a Republican? Republican. He's yeah. a Republican. Yeah. yeah. He thinks the field is wide open. And and he also feels like he kind of feels like he has a duty like to the sane Republicans <laughs> to throw his hat in the ring and sort of get get this you know, dumpster fire put out. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, I think that, I think that, uh, you know, in very quickly here, Trump is probably going to be, if he doesn't know it, then everybody else will know it, that he, he will be not really a viable candidate, a viable person who can run because of all the stuff that's going on. Or he may outright have to be pulled out of the race. I mean, I don't know what happened when, it was what last week, probably when they were saying that he hadn't paid the fees for being a candidate. And so they were going to, they're going to, they're going to take him off the, oh the thing. They were going to take him off the ballot. You know, he he's the only one on pay the fees to file for president. My no, God. he didn't finish. Oh, paying I missed that fees. juicy information. Yeah. And so he had, you know, he'd already been delinquent on them and they were saying, so if you don't pay it by thus and such, so even there they were giving him a, a handout. But here's what I think. I think that Trump will be shown to be a non-appropriate person to be able to even run for president, let alone hold the office. And I also think DeSantis is going to have that same issue pretty Me quickly too. here. Me too. Uh, probably before the summertime or in the summertime. And by the time that happens, that's right around the time that normal people would be declaring. And that's probably when Sununu would throw his hat in. And his name, for some reason, I feel like is just like floating around the zeitgeist. I do think he's going to be an actual viable person for the Republican candidacy. Thank goodness. That means that we will be having intelligent people do this again and not just crazy people. So. Well, he's not too, too, too normal. Uh, some people are saying he's a MAGA. I don't know. I, I don't know. I just know that he, he is going to run, but I don't see a Republican winning. I don't, you, you let me know. No. I, I no, see no. Biden or Kamala Harris winning. Um, mm -hmm. we, we, that it's that kind of really strong energy that I don't get all the time, but when I get it, I pretty much trust it a hundred percent. Um, yeah. so you, you the same. Yeah. 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 So, you know, the, because it is probably going to be another democratic white house, I don't really, this is awful to say, but I don't care as much about who the Republican person is <laughs> just like, yeah, okay, fine. It's going to be yeah, that guy, whatever. Yeah, yeah, but, right, but the right. Democratic thing I think is, um, you know, will there be any challengers to Biden? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but I think he'll win. I think he'll, I think he'll be fine. I think physically and everything, I think he'll be fine and he'll win. So, all right. So uh, another question that we had here from Ron Brock, who sent in a few questions, is um, any updates on Ukraine starting their offensive soon to kick the Russians out yes, of their country? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. I, I don't know why I'm so excited, because it's it's really ugly and it's deadly. But I'm excited because my a lot of times my predictions, my energy is about three months in the future. Um, yeah. So the guides told me it's the planes, right? They're getting fighter jets. They're getting fighter jets now from everybody. I mean, literally, at least three countries are giving them fighter jets, which is complicated because some of them are, you know, not 
they're all different kinds. But anyway, Ukraine is sending uh, fighter pilots to train on those jets at these different countries, including the United States. So that's yeah. going to be a big deal. And then there's the Wagner Group. And then do you know that guy's name that starts with a P? Is it Prigozhin? 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 I don't know. So there's two people that that besides besides Putin, there's the Wagner, and then I think it's Prigozhin or whatever. The one of those groups and they're mercenaries. And this is how this is how Putin does it. If he's not the one out there committing the crimes and it's a mercenary, then it's hard for the IC the ICC, the International Crime um, Court, to charge Putin with it because it's not Putin. One of his one of these two people has decided that they're pulling their people out and they're going to go back, sadly, for Africa. They're going to go back to the continent of Africa where they do a lot of this kind of uh, mercenary for hire work. So mm -hmm. this guy's th these mercenaries are not getting paid. Um, they're pulling their troops out. Um, it's it's what. Yeah. But how do you say his name? Suvi Pragos Pragosin Pragosin. Um, anyway, that's, that's what I get. It's, it's going to turn around you guys. They're in the mud season now, so it's very hard to traverse, but, uh, planes can fly right over the mud and I see them, uh, targeting they're they're targeting military installments in Russia. Okay. With these planes. So Russia cannot even get their, their, arms, artillery, whatever, they can't get it out. They can't even get it to Ukraine. They're going to make Ukraine, they're going to make Russia say uncle, in my opinion. And then wow. I see regime change. Then I see regime change. I don't think it's a good thing. I've said this, the guides have said this for a long time. I see some sort of militaristic person coming in as a leader. And, and Putin is even saying that publicly. You don't want to get rid of me because you're going to have a general and then you're going to have way worse, you know, you're not going to have anything that I, you're going to have way worse of a life than I've given you. Um, so anyway, that's okay. I don't care. They can govern themselves. If they want to, if they want to have a, a military tribunal ruling them, then that's fine. Just don't mess with any other countries. And that's what I see. And I see Ukraine getting Crimea back, Donetsk back, uh, all of their all the the parts of the country that were annexed, I see them getting that back. And I've always said this too. Zelensky will climb and crawl over broken glass all the way to wherever the far corners of Russia to get those children back. He will bring those children back. He will never, ever in his entire lifetime stop searching for them. Yeah, I, yeah, I, all of those things that you say, it's just, seems like it's definitely that that is the way it's going to happen the part the part of the setting up a peace treaty or setting up a terms of surrender for russia or whatever that's the part where i i just i don't see clearly how i can't i can't visualize that part yeah. i just can't visualize i know it's going to happen i kn i know that you're right about Zelensky because he's such a strong person and he's so incensed about all the things that that russia has done to his people but i just don't see how it comes together that they have some sort of a talk where russia actually says yeah okay you get to keep crimea yeah. i just don't see yeah. i just don't see how that's going to happen but i think it's going to happen and i think i think it's uh you know, it's definitely comes down to Russia saying uncle. I think they will. I think they will. I think the country, I think Russian people will be so, or they already are so upset with Putin, but I think they will be so um, ashamed of Putin trying to do this to a group of people who are basically also Russian. You know, the, like, the, wh why? Why would you kill your own people? That's so bad. Just so, just for the real estate. That's you just guys, so, so, so bad. You can Google the videos. There's videos of these Russian soldiers saying, we were stuck in a meat grinder and we're all that's left of our entire battalion. And what they do is they, they bring these things they call backers. So they put troops behind the troops on the front line and if they try to come back, they shoot them under their feet. And then it's also been alleged 
which enough people have alleged this, I think is some truth to it, that because a lot of this is being done through these mer mercenary type, you know, groups that you pay, if you can pay, then you don't go what's called on the zero line. The zero line is the fodder, the cannon fodder line. Um, if you pay, if you have some money, then you can be in the, you could be a backer. And uh, Ukraine has pictures of some of these Russian soldiers rushing Ukraine positions with shovels, no guns. There's a picture I saw with a stick carved that looked like a gun, a very crude one. So they're just meant to eat up ammunition. It's attrition. Wow. They want to have a war of attrition. They feel like they have more ammunition and more people to die than Ukraine can, you know, it's, it's incredibly sad. It's, it's evil. It's evil is what it is. Yeah. And I think, I think, have they come out with more war crimes against Putin? I haven't heard of any. They will. They will. I think they're going to have a, maybe not a huge laundry list, but I think they're going to have another few, four or five very specific war crimes against Putin that is just going to make the world gasp. I just yeah. don't, I just think it's going to be so sad as it becomes. And maybe that's what causes them to finally stand down too, because um, the, if they continue hit that brutality, then other people in, in Russia will also be charged with war crimes. Yeah. And so some, somehow that's what I'm seeing is that somehow that kind of changes the tide, but I don't see in the, in the realm of, you know, force and guns and fighting and war. I don't see how that really actually comes to an end. I see that it does come to an end, but I don't see exactly what the mechanics of it are. But I agree. So maybe bad. that's not written yet. You know, maybe how yeah. it happens hasn't been decided yet. Uh, yeah. Everybody still has free will. And I hope that, that the, the war crimes, the Hague, I hope they can go after the Wagner group and I hope they go after this guy Perotzen or whatever his name is. You know, they're, they should be tried. We, we should try them. Even if I guess they're not associated with a country, but we need to change. That's something else that we probably need to change because God bless Africa. Now they're going to the, they're going to double down on the continent of Africa, you know, and uh, it's terrible. Yeah. It's really, it's horrible. It's horrible. Ooh, oh I know. God. Let's let go of that. Let's move okay. on. Okay. So, but here's it's good news. They're going to be. They're going to. They're going to win. They're going to win. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. They are going to win. All right. So this is from Joe. Do you see any possibilities of the DOJ creating a new Department of National Terrorism Terrorism Division of DOJ? Because just look at the time and manpower involved in just this fiasco. Because magnetism runs deep. Um, I I do think that. So many things are going to be changed about our government, just like after 9-11. So many things are going to be changed about our government, about the agencies, about the structure of the agencies. I mean, Trump disintegrated so many agencies. He dissolved so much that, you know, Biden probably hasn't even got through half of it yet rebuilding it. So, I mean, I guess it's kind of a good time to do it because they're revamping all of this stuff anyway. And they've got such a rich uh, talent pool to pick from. Think of all the people who were let go during Trump's era that uh, could come back and do their work um, and, and have it appreciated. And they'd be very happy to do that. So, I think definitely, yes, there will be lots and lots of different little, uh, there'll be different ways that they parse it out because they will finally acknowledge what a threat it is in general and how, how uh, the various factions that do this have unique issues and problems that have to be addressed. So I don't think it will be just, oh, it's the Department of Terror, but I do think there'll be lots and lots of little individual pockets of it that um, use people with very specific talents. So that's what I think. I agree with you. I don't know if it'll be separate or new or if they'll just like you're kind of saying, create little divisions. But yeah, we'll have to because we we have to learn from this. We yeah. This is our opportunity to learn from it. If we decide to just maybe indict Trump and maybe we indict some some House members, maybe we indict some attorneys 
uh, we didn't really fix the problem, you know? So we really do need to kind of shore up our resources for the next, you know, Trump like energy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now someone else, uh, from my channel and I, I did not get their name. I'm sorry. Maybe this is another one from Ron Brock. Um, will the lawsuit, uh, regarding Texas abortion laws by the five women be successful? I heard yes. And then I heard no, that always, um, so that means that it, it, maybe it gets punted up to the next higher court or, or maybe how can it be? Yes. And no. Um, will it be successful? It sounds like yes, but it's going to be not what people think it's going to be. I, I don't understand their answer that that's all I can say. It sounds like yes, but I there's a there's a, there's more complicated something to it than that. Yeah, I I I agree that they're if ultimately they will win. But I also feel that um oh, I have to close this down here. I also feel that uh there will be a very hope high profile case where a woman probably sadly passes because of this law oh, that's yeah that's really hard to talk about but that's that's what i see and i and and so that's in the midst of this big lawsuit getting news headlines that headline is going to come out and so too late for that for her and probably and probably many others right there's probably many others that it's going to hurt but in but in the overall i think that they will prevail and that will also help change those laws in Texas help. I don't know if it'll be able to, but it'll help. So, okay. What else have we got here? Uh, Texas and Texas. And, okay. Here's uh, another one from one of my viewers. Um, Texas and Florida legislatures are trying to funnel public education funds to private religious schools when, how, and will they be stopped? Will feds step in? Do you see relief, improvements, and funding for our teachers in underfunded schools? Was that nationally, or what was that a question yeah. just towards Texas and Texas, Tennessee, and Florida? Or, or maybe that's part of her name. Maybe it's Texas and Florida. No, I think it's Texas, Tennessee, and Florida are states where they're trying to funnel away public education funds to private religious schools. They, they are doing that. I mean, their, their point is to defund public schools. They, they, everything needs to be profitable, right? So they don't want the government to pay for anything. Uh, they want, that's why when you join the army, you, you have actually contractors serving you food instead of having privates or, or whoever, you know, Army enlisted, in my opinion, should be serving food. We should just keep all of this in the military. We don't need to have con civilian contractors out there in the war zone. I don't know how that makes any sense. And then you know that they're charging the Army a bunch of money for that too, right? Yeah. Um, it's the same reason why they're going after schools. Now, these charter schools are really big in Texas. If it's a good one, if it's a good, quote unquote, good charter school, you can't even get in. There's a waiting list forever. Um and um, they just want tax rebates so that people can afford to go to private schools now. So the government funds charter schools in Texas. We actually fund them. We shouldn't be, but we are. And now they want the government to fund private schools that could be religious schools. I mean, it just, guys, we got to put our, our foot down somewhere. Really and truly, it's like, you know, if we don't, well, I don't know where we're going to end up. But what I see happening is I see the federal government getting involved. I see after all this hullabaloo with Trump going out, he's going to get indicted. I don't care anybody says he's going to get indicted. He's going to be under house arrest and some kind of get mo kind of thing. Um, then some of these these House members are going to go down. We're going to have new elections. We're going to get a few more House members. But just the idea that these house members were indicted or had to step down is going to put a chilling effect 
And everybody's, it's like, it's like the, the, the principal has walked into your classroom and everybody sits up straight. You know, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to find their morals. They're going to find their ethics. And then we're going to have bipartisanship. And then we're going to be able to vote on some federal laws. They're going to affect the states. What do you think, Colleen? Yeah, I think very, very similar. I think it's going to take some time though. I don't see, certainly not this year, I don't yeah. see anything really changing big. In fact, I see them feeling like they've really succeeded this year. Like they're really happy that somebody's making a lot of money. They're very, they're feeling very cushy in their role. Um, but I don't, I, I don't think it'll last. I think, it, you know, the, and that's the thing is that they're going to make hay while the sun shines, you know, as long as they can uh, keep their con running, they're going to keep it running. And when things start to shift and change and those, like you said, when those people are brought down for maybe even other things that they've done that are really bad, mm -hmm. that's when I think they're going to sit up and find Jesus and say, oh my God, yes, yeah, schools, that's really important, you know? So that's, that's what I see happening. But I think for the rest of this year, no, it's going to keep going the way it's going, which is so sad because we're going to have... Um, a bunch of kids that really don't know what they should know. They're not going to know civics in the right way. They're not going to understand history in the right way. That's going to, it's going to affect their language skills. They're not going to know how to talk with other people. So those kids, I think will find themselves having some real social problems because of this. What about when they go to college? How are they going to talk to other people about anything they're just going to feel out of touch. So I think there's some huge downsides, aside from just the fact that it's wrong. There's going to be some huge impacts on those children, too. So that's what I say. I agree. So, okay. So let's see here what else we have. Oh. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> Okay. China just broke it, brokered a peace deal with Saudi Arabia and Iran, who hated each other. Now Saudi is considering using the yen instead of the dollar. How will this affect the U.S.? That's wild. I saw this. Some Republicans have been screaming that this, this is going to devalue the dollar, the dollar's history. It's all over for America. Uh, that's just a bunch of bull hockey. Um, China. I'm, I'm getting a picture of Biden, but they're showing me Biden and they're showing me Biden, perhaps even flying to Saudi Arabia and meeting face to face with the prince. And doing what he does, you know, doing what he does. Say, look, this is why this isn't going to work out for you. And uh, not only that, that's that's just common sense, right? But not only that, if you do this and you affect my country and our, you know, if you affect the dollar, this is what we're going to do in response. Biden has a, 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 a an ace up his sleeve that he's been holding on to. That, that he has not told anybody about. I believe they're telling me this is like a, he worked out a secret deal with another country to uh, supply us with oil. Um, Biden is so angry with Saudis and with China and with Iran um, that, that he would, he would do something crazy. He would even say, we're going on a diet of oil. I'm going to make it so we're going to tax it. We're going to, we're he would do something, even if it was to slow us down, to stop them. Um, because it's, this is the beginning of the end, right? This is, this is a play for world domination and world power. And he's not going to let it happen. And I see our friends, Australia coming in. I see Canada coming in. Uh, I just don't think this is going to go anywhere. I mean, what do you get? Do you get that or something different? I, I love your big world picture of this. That is, I love that. I just love what you just got. 
So, yeah, I see Biden very sure of himself and going over there. And like I had said um, sometime, I can't remember when it was, but anyway, astrologically, over the summer and stuff, Biden is just Mr. Cool. He's just got planets in his back pocket that he's going to be able to pull up. You thought it was cool that he went to Ukraine and nobody knew knew about it? He's got other stuff up his sleeve. And we're just going to be going, we've got the coolest president in the world. He's so cool. Look at all the things that he did. But I, yeah, I could see him definitely going over there and talking to him. But he is definitely going to pull them back, pull this whole situation back, control it. And I think domestically, I think the effect of this is for the Republicans who might, they still might be in the House, like your Jim Jordans and your MGTs. And they still might be there. And even them, I see kind of sitting up and going, whoa, he did that? Like, it'll finally start to get through to them that, they are not dealing with an old man. They are dealing with an elder statesman. He is like the primo. He's a brilliant the, one. Brilliant. And a Scorpio. Like he's yeah. like yeah. he's not taking any prisoners. So I see him playing a good game with with them and, yeah. and uh pulling out all the stops for us. But I loved what you said. I think I think that's just brilliant. I think I hope all that comes true, what you just said. <laughs> that's what, I, I, that's what I'm I love for. that you called him cool because in my last video they called him cool hand Luke. That's what they called they yeah. kept calling him cool hand Luke, you know, and you're over here using the cool. So you yeah. guys watching this video, when when psychics pick up on that energy, you'll often see headlines, Biden's cool hand. You know, or Biden's cool demeanor. You're going to see the word cool with him because it's in his energy. And and yeah. that's what he's going to be projecting is this coolness. Yeah, he's great. Very he's cool. Really, really good. Very um, cool. Good question. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for that question. Oh, boy. Let's see what else we got here. <laughs> you know, people have been asking about Netanyahu. I don't know what all the question is, but if people are worried about him or something, um, um, he's another one who wants to be an oligarch, who wants to, um, he, he, you know, he wants to rule the country. He thinks he knows best for everybody and uh, everybody should just listen to him, you know, um, and I don't see it going well. Do you see it going well for Netanyahu? Because I don't. I don't see him. I, I almost don't even see him finishing his term. Mm -mm. No, and I, I don't see. <laughs> I see him claiming a health problem, but it's not a health problem. <laughs> I see him. Right. I see oh, him a little bit running away from what's going on. I can see him even so. I mean, the image that I get uh, is of him in a three-piece suit climbing into a hospital bed, <laughs> <laughs> pulling the like covers he's, up. <laughs> like he's, he's really trying to pretend that you know. Oh, oh wow. it's my heart. It's my yeah, heart. Yeah, I yeah, have yeah. to step down. It's my heart. You know. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't think. I can not believe he got in there again anyway. I thought that they did not like him in that country. It's but this energy, man, it's the energy. And here's another one I want to, I don't think anybody's asked this question. I'm going to preface it by saying that if you guys watch Cash Peters, who's, who's awesome, um, I guess he did a video where he said we shouldn't be gleeful if Trump gets indicted because that kind of tarnishes our energy. I want to say two things about that. Number one, I'm willing to sit in detention. When I cross over, if I need to sit in detention, I'm going to just take that. I'm going to take the F. Okay, number two, uh, let's be gleeful for democracy. Let's be gleeful for rule of law. Let's be gleeful for respect. So maybe I won't be gleeful when these people go down. I mean, I'll try not to, but I'll try to pretend like I'm gleeful instead because it's helping America. But so yes. I'm prefacing that by saying, uh, what do you think? Because not people and no one's talking about this. And this is a little bit touchy, but McConnell, he's still he's still out of commission. And I'm I'm starting to think that he may not come back or if he does, it's for a short period of time. What do you get? I well, when he first went down, that is exactly what I said, is that he he may not come back. And if he does, it'll just be a short period of time. Yes. 
And yeah. I saw something else in a headline. I think it was just today that he he is, you know, dealing with other health issues. Well, what other health issues? We thought he had a fall. And then it was, oh, yeah, he also broke his rib and did something to something else. And I'm just thinking, dude, you're 81 years old. Isn't the universe saying, slow down, take a nap? Yeah, like, just leave like, the Senate. Look, I'll help you understand what the universe is trying to tell you. Mitch. Yes, leave, leave the, the Senate. Senate. Yeah. I mean, he did. He accomplished his lifelong goal. He, he put did. Well, 200 federal. Did. Yeah. I mean, he, he accomplished that. What more does he want? You know, uh, I don't know. Maybe Saturday Night Live is right. Maybe he really is the Grim Reaper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, K Travel uh, Tarot says he's already back as of this morning working from home. I We said we see him coming back, but I don't see him lasting long. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, uh, he, he just can't, he, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't have the life force. His chi is not strong enough. I don't see him. And, and the Republican party is sort of like a pack of wolves that if you're sick or dying, they're going to eat you. you. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. And, you and uh, no, you can't be weak. And the thing, the thing that's going to be actually wonderful about him finally stepping down is that all that power that he wields now has to get kind of dispersed out into the right. other humans uh, in the Senate and they, they don't know what he knows. Good. Right. We don't, we don't want anybody there that knows what he knows right. because the stuff that he knows is kind of dastardly. We want, right. you know, let some young whippersnapper come along and yeah. <laughs> do, make mistakes. That's right. That's right. Whoever replaces him is not going to be McConnell. It's going to be better for us. Yeah, thank uh, goodness. Even if they're crazy like MTG kind of crazy, uh, we're not going to put... Uh, talk to us. Can you talk to us briefly about the astrology? Um, is there this energy of accountability happening right now? Or like you're not going to get away with things? Or am I wrong? Well, uh, when Pluto went into Aquarius, that energy really did shift into, okay, now we're going to do what's good for all the people, not just the little pea heads at the top of the pile. So uh, yes, that is there. Now Pluto is going to go retrograde and, and dip very, very slightly back into Capricorn in mid-June. And when it does, that gives us about, I think it's about six months where it's time. It's it's kind of like when you do Mercury retrograde. It's going to be retrograde, and it's going to wrap up a bunch of other stuff that it had touched previously and maybe not finished, like lawsuits with Trump, like you know lawsuits with you know all the other yahoos that that should have gone to jail that got pardons or just skated out of it or something. So it'll wrap up a bunch of that stuff. But then it'll go back into Aquarius, has one more retrograde, and then finally at the end of 2024, it'll really stay there. So what we'll see in these next 18 months is we will see a lot of cleaning up of loose ends, of big loose ends, like cleaning up a lot of big loose ends. Um, things like the war in Ukraine is going to be wrapped up. It's going to be cleaned up. It's going to be tied up in a bow and then they can start rebuilding their country. And then, you know, uh, Zelensky will become the master of the world stage because he, that's what he's going to do for the next 20 years. Yeah. But for us in this country, it's also going to change a lot of things in our government. Those are a lot of things are going to change the way people are elected, the vetting that they go through, the laws that we have about elections. I mean, I think we are looking at an at, at five to 10 years of just rewriting everything, including amendments to the Constitution. I just think, you know, because that's what Pluto and Aquarius is going to do. It's going to bring all that energy of the beginning of our country back to us. So. Pluto is in Aquarius for 20 years, guys. So that's when, what's it, going to do. when it goes into retrograde in June and then it, it comes back out, you said six months. So when does it come back out again? Um, I, I think it's in October. So, so from that June. That makes to, so much sense. 
I think that's yeah, the thing it's not quite six you. months, and then it's gonna and then it's gonna be there for a while and make it probably maybe back into Aquarius, and then it goes retrograde again, and then it yeah. Okay. So it that's does okay. this, like, that's it does this dance back and forth. But you also have Saturn in Pisces, and Saturn is uh, in Pisces is a very interesting place for it to be because Saturn is about structure, and Pisces is about dissolving structures. So a lot of things are going to get let go and dissolved, a right. lot of stuff. So as those things are let go and dissolved, then the what the Pisces energy will use Saturn for is to reconstruct them in a more practical way, in a way that is more uh, concerned with serving the people, the masses. Pisces, Aquarius is about the people and it's about the masses and the good, the benefit for all humanity. But Pisces is about the masses in terms of compassion, like Kuan oh, Yin, Kuan Yin kind of God. compassion. Yeah. So Saturn in Pisces is really going to help with all the iniquities that have found people where, you know, why in this country do people not have enough food to eat? That's just cuckoo. And those like, kids, kids that can't get free lunches. Who, yeah. I have a friend of a friend who's against free lunches. I, I, I almost lost, you know. I, I had a friend years ago who didn't think she should pay taxes because they went to the schools and she didn't have kids. No, she didn't have like, kids. Didn't you know, I'm just thing. like, yeah, do you like, want the world to go to the go yeah, to hell in a handbasket? Yeah, you want yeah. your kids to have a we'll, good education, and we'll send you to a little island where you can be yeah. by yourself, and your taxes can go to pay for your little your you and your you know you know what I mean? Yes. Um, but that's but that's the thing we we by the guides are saying by in the last 20 years, we've gotten rid of art in schools. We've gotten rid of, we're yeah. not supporting the humanities in schools. So kids grow up just not having that humanity in their mind. You know what I mean? They, they just, yeah. they just want to go to STEM. Let me learn math. Let me excel. And they, and no one's teaching them about compassion and what, how you can be lifted up by a song or a play. That's what's missing truly. Yeah. Um, in our world right now, I think. I think so too. And I think that social media is filling that void with whatever social media wants to put out there. So yeah. that's where people are getting their music. Okay. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, you know about, um, I can't even think of anybody who's new, uh, Rihanna, you know about Rihanna, but you don't know about Aaron Copeland's you yeah, know, that's true. music. That's true. You, you know, you don't you don't know about Bela Bartok and you don't right. know about Haydn and you don't know about the classical writers and not even the old guys. You don't know about Leonard Bernstein. You don't yeah, know yeah. about Stephen Sondheim. You don't know about yeah. these people who are just amazing musical, very prodigious musical artists who have given us so much. And that's sad because that is the compassion. That is your heart. That's really sad. And artists always help us make sense of things, right? I mean, artists help us yeah. make sense of grief, of joy. Uh, artists have ha made help us make sense of wars. And, and this goes all the way back to the beginning of, of time uh, when we used yeah. music, uh, we started using music. Uh, but you know what? I think that I'll tell you the positive I see, though. Are these kids, these star kids, crystal kids, whatever you want to call them, um, indigo children. I don't care. They're, they don't see race. They don't, they're just not into that, the money or the violence. They're just not. And I think that's going to help us. They're, they're, they're here to show us the compassion and hopefully they will be tuned into Shakespeare or they will be tuned into uh Haydn or, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll just be tuned into a bigger, you know, grasp of, the humanities. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I think that, you know, I do think it's going to be a very small portion of the population that, that gets denied these things like in Florida and Texas and Tennessee. I, I don't think it's going to be a huge portion of the population, but I just feel bad for them. And I do, I do think that the kids 
even those who are coming of age now, um, you know, they they have such an interesting worldview. Yeah. That yeah. it does matter what they get in their education, but in many ways it doesn't matter because they've already they're already here to teach us. That's right. You know, they're already here to teach us. It's crazy. And they're and they're on the internet and we, you know, they're not gonna read the book anyway. Uh, heck, they're probably gonna be using that chapped, what is that chat? The the yeah, GPT. GPT. They're going to be using yeah. that to write their their papers and do their art projects anyway. And there's some professors that are actually embar you know embracing that. So uh, things are changing quickly. We just kind of have to hold on. Um, yeah. All I want, and and I I can handle that. Even though I I was a photographer for many decades, I can I can get my head around that. I just draw the line at violence. We've got to do something about the violence. Yeah. I think so too. And I, and I do think that their worldview, those, those younger star seeds and indigo children, rainbow children, I think, I think their attitude is to prevent war and violence I, because yeah. so many of them have been victims or, or witnesses of school shootings and just shootings in general, because there's just so damn much of it. What is, wow, that is, but you know that that's what the astrology said too is that this period of time especially march and april there will be there will be more violence because it's the it's we thought it was coming to a head all these last 6 years it's actually coming to a pinnacle head now for because people don't accept things the first time right there's a there's a process there's an organic process of people understanding difficult concepts and and especially things they don't agree with it's very difficult for them and now they've been exposed maybe enough times that they'll begin to see how wrong some of this thinking is and how much damage the the verbiage does how much damage like trump will never get that but he's in his 70s almost 80 so you know hopefully he won't be influencing that many more people but you know, i don't know it's sad it's very sad it's sad but i think women i think the divine feminine i see women stepping up to say okay we've had it if if no one else is going to throw their their selves forward even in a protest or even in front of a gun the women are going to do it look at iran look at all the 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 you know major protests there that the women and now men are doing together. I I really think this attack on the women is gonna is gonna spur women to to lead some of this. I really do. I see that. I see women leading this going forward. Yeah. Well, I think the divine feminine has been rising for the last few years, and while it's it's she's subtle. She's not. You know, she doesn't come out and do things with big parades and tanks, you know, she, she does things with flowers and water and, and groups of children, <laughs> but she is strong nevertheless. And I think that the, it's obvious that the female energy is rising all over the world and that women are really, really strong. I mean, you, you wait in 2024, there are going to be so many women running for office. It's just going to blow everybody away, but she's a woman. Yeah. And, <laughs> and and did you see did you see Biden when he was addressing the uh, Canadian government? And he was oh. in there. I don't know what it's called, but like our House of Representatives. Yeah. And he said, uh, congratulations, you have 50 percent women. We have 50 percent women. That's great for women everywhere. And one side stood up and Biden said, hey, even if you you know, are conservative, we understand, but you should stand up for women. He, he basically challenged them and they stood up. Oh, this is the Biden thing. Remember when he did it during his address, his, his, yes. his address to the union, yeah. he said, Oh, so you guys don't support social security. And he literally got them to stand up to say that they would support it. He, he is, he means business. You guys, he's even doing it in Canada. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah, I'm telling you, man, him and his aviator glasses, he's going to change the world. <laughs> it's going him to and change Zelensky, the world. Him and Zelensky. It's interesting. Him and Zelensky seem linked energetically and uh, Putin and Donald 
Yes. Yes. That's That's very, very true. And that's, you should look at at that because that's so weird. Why is that? You know, like I've often wondered why are they linked? It's almost like good against evil. Truly. Yeah. Yeah, really. It is. I will look at that because I've looked at both. I've looked at all four of those charts. I've looked at, uh, Biden and Zelensky, I can definitely see how they're linked. They're like brothers from another mother. They're they're oh, definitely nice. linked. Yeah, very much linked. Um, Putin and Donald, um, I I was a little slow to the party getting the drift that they were karmically linked. That took me a while to accept just because I just didn't want to look at their charts anymore. <laughs> blame you i don't blame you I don't blame okay you. i'm done with that but i will i will look at those i think that's a good thing to bring up in the future i think that'd be a really good reading to do oh my gosh well my friend we've been on for a little more than an hour um and i think we're let's see see if we have any last minute questions here let me just go down to the end and work my way up here uh da, 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 da. I hope you guys are enjoying this political chat. We're just hanging out and chatting. Let us know in the chat if you think this is an interesting format. Oh, my God. I love that. Freda, men in Iran are wearing hijabs to support women. I love that. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. I'm telling you, it's it's amazing. Now, of course, somebody also mentioned um, Iran labeled, uh, Iran made drone struck a Syrian outpost where United States has soldiers um, and one contractor was killed um, and soldiers were hurt. And I think it's interesting. All these Republicans are like, what are we doing in Syria? What are we doing in Syria? Trump took everybody out of Syria. Well, you know where we are. We're, we're, we're on an oil field, Conoco. Of course we're there protecting oil, right? Uh, yeah. You know, I think this needs to be a conversation among the American people. Are do we really want our service personnel over there protecting a corporate corporation's oil? Uh, what are we getting out of it? What's America getting yeah. out of it? You know, we yeah. should be getting a better deal with the gas prices. I mean, we should get something out of it, right? Or maybe we shouldn't be doing it. I'm just saying it's a conversation we need to be having. Now, of course, so we struck Iran. And, and this has been going on. This is not new. So don't think that this is like some acceleration. Apparently, this has been going on for quite some time. That this back and forth between Iran and Syria with us being involved, you know, has been going on for yeah. a long time. So, a long time. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't I don't have I, I don't have anything to say about that. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame oh, you. I'm just looking for other. Uh, uh, Anybody have a quick question we can answer? Throw it in the chat. Yeah, here we go. Here's. Oh, one. yeah, here's one. Hurricane Force one. I like this one, too. Oh, uh, what is that? It, MTG Hurricane. went to the jail to visit her future digs. That's exactly yeah. what I thought. Uh, yeah. Mary, Mary Taylor Green went to visit the insurrectionists who are being held in a nicer part of the D.C. jails. And and a Democrat went with them just to be like the real two, truth. two oh, Democrats two, two uh-huh. went with them just yes. to, to so. And I think that see that's a change for Democrats. That is a change for Democrats. They're not going to let Republicans just have the narrative and make up the stories. They're going to be there witnessing with their that's own right. you know that's eyes right. um, what's going on. But I got the same thing. I I literally heard the same thing. Like, what is it when you're a a crime, like a serial killer, and you keep going back to the scene of the crime. <laughs> I yeah. kind of feel like she's attracted to where these people are being held because she knows that she's going. I, I, that's her fear. This is why she's trying to. And plus, uh, they're showing me that she could put this out to her followers and say, "Send me some money because I'm going to support these guys." We know she's not going to. We know she's not going to if she if she does that, but. For entertainment yeah. purposes only. Yeah. Yeah. I think MTG is just learning the art of the grift. And and uh, part of that art is to capitalize on every situation so that you make money. And, you know, she's yeah. learning at the feet of the master. Yes. So, right. And I think she's going to go down. Don't you see her going down? 
I do. I see her having a pretty ignominious fall. I see. I ignominious. Mean, ignominious. I think that uh, right. she won't. She won't be able to pronounce that word, but that's okay, because she she often trips on her words. She's one that she's oh so God. anxious to get all of this stuff out that she doesn't oh stop God. to connect her mouth to her brain. It just you know she just stumbles over all of it. But that last uh, interview that. They got her on with the guy whistling in the background. I know. Oh my God. Priceless. That Priceless. was fantastic. It was yeah. fantastic. It totally ruined the audio. So um it yeah, it didn't ruin it, but it was was distracting. And did oh, you right. see that panel truck they had with the TV screens? No they had a panel truck no. with TV live TV screens, like you would see in like uh Vegas, uh basically showing pictures of the insurrection. <laughs> So they they trolled her. They, they trolled her. They trolled her big time. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. And did you see the um, the guy who interviewed? Well, the guy from is it? J I want to say Jason Klepper from the the Daily Show went out to interview people in New York who had shown up to support Trump in case he was going to get indicted on Tuesday. Uh huh. And he and he found one guy. <laughs> found one guy who was dressed, you know, um, not like politically or anything. He was just, you know, dressed for the cold. And he sat down with him and he talked to him and, and it was very funny. It was very funny. The guy was like, after a while, the guy was like, I don't need you here. Yes, I'm supporting Donald Trump, but I don't need you here. You don't, you know, I don't, I don't need this. Go away. And Jason Clever was, well, but I just want to get your, view. I don't, I don't need you. No, go away. <laughs> like, the guy just like didn't get what was going on. So, oh my yeah. God, that is That's hilarious! So they found yeah. one. People are reporting in the chat that it's not going well in Waco. That there's not a big crowd in Waco. Oh, gee! I, what a I mean, this is why you see uh, Trump doing more and more bizarre and and violent things. You saw him with the baseball bat, right? Um, yeah. And uh, I, I, I guess we could wrap it up, but. Um, do you, this is, this is difficult because I can't get a good handle on it, but do you see him getting a, giving, actually getting a gag order, actually being gagged? I, I do. I do think they're going to have to do that because he's, he's too dangerous. Even if they sneak people in by the back door and have an anonymous jury, jury, and even if they slide him in the side door, the, it, he's just if they don't tell him to shut it he's going to create riots mm -hmm. even if they're you know because now we may not be getting a lot of magas about the indictment but for the court case they probably would have more people who are interested but you're also going to get people who are opposed to him coming too so he's creating this yeah you know this bad energy this uh, pro and con back and forth ugh, uh, yeah i think i think they're gonna have to i know they're talking about it i know they're talking about it i just don't know i i i know they're i i know they have to but i i'm not i'm just not sure how Bragg or willis is gonna parse this they're they're terrified you know but i but I, this is good maybe they let him have his waco um you know, su surprise of nothing so that they could see, you know, it's almost like the DOJ and, and everybody in concern is watching to say, okay, he's not turning out the people. We don't have to worry about these riots oh. like we thought we did. What they have to worry about are the pop-offs, you know, the bomb threats, the white powder, the yeah stuff like that. So I think it's going to be more lone wolf kind of people than yeah. groups. Uh, I do think the groups will be the groups that are already formed that we already know about that are the, you know, the Nazi kind of groups. Um, but a lot of the militia members are in jail or being or yes. are currently in trial. So, yeah, I, and this I is this is what they were talking about in the news, too, is that a lot of them, there's a thousand uh, resurrectionists or, or, or insurrectionists already in jail. A thousand. That's thousand. A lot of people. A See, thousand. And I, think, I think that's why they drew, drew this out. Besides the fact that it's just good law work, you need to take time. But if they had done this in 2021 or 2022, we would have had a civil war. 
we would yeah. have had a much different experience. And, and, and instead what we have is I see Biden bringing this recession down to a soft landing. I see everybody going to, for the most part, enjoy their summer for the most part, going to enjoy their summer. And look, if all these hotheads are enjoying themselves and going to their barbecue and going to their, you know, whatever it is, their concert or their drag races or their hunting or whatever it is, then they're living the they're living their life. They're not going to be agitated to want and fight. Right. So this is a good environment to bring those charges, I feel like. Yeah, I think you're right. Something else they were saying on the news is that, you know, a lot of the people who haven't been arrested are still looking over their shoulder, wondering if their picture was taken, wondering if they're going to get called in next. And so they don't want to go and protest That's for right. him or fight for him because Such they don't want to go to jail. And they saw that he did not do anything for the people who were arrested. He did not go down even to the Senate with or the Congress with him, with them. He completely abandoned them. Now that was because of the CIA, but they didn't care. I mean, they just felt abandoned. So, yeah. but I, I think you're right. The lone wolf is what, and, and that, and they were mentioning that too, that it's not, for, for domestic terrorism going forward, it's not so much that they have to worry about huge mobs of people because the group mm -hmm. are now identified in, in mm -hmm. social media and just out in the world. It's the lone wolves. It's, it's the, the ones wolves. that you really don't know. It's so interesting that you bring that up because apparently some dummy who was at Jan 6 showed up in New York at one of Trump's, you know, protest and they arrested him <laughs> they id'd him and they they had been looking for this big dummy and they and they they're like ah, there he is yep yeah that's him let's get him so you know you're right you're absolutely right if yeah. you're dumb enough to show your face then you're likely to get arrested because the fbi has all this facial recognition software everywhere that's right you know? that's right yeah that's crazy so uh yeah i mean I, I think they will have to gag him, though, just just on the chance that some lone wolf does something cuckoo. You know, you just but don't I, know. If they gag him, they're going to have to put him in that little Gitmo thing that I see. It's like a house arrest with a Gitmo kind of security where his aides that come and take care of him are padded down. I mean, seriously, like Gitmo, like for real yeah. secure. Yeah. Um, because how else can you gag him? I mean, he, he won't listen to any no. law. To any look at, court order. Even, even Roger Stone with the gag order still yeah. went against it. So, you know, Trump definitely would go against it. But they also are were saying that, um, and this was just attorneys hypothesizing on the news, that because of Trump's actions in social media this last week or so, that that's new charges on him. <laughs> getting new char and i think we had said that in in uh some of the shows that we were doing that yeah they're gonna charge him with all of this stuff because he can't you can't do that that's it's it's tantamount to witness tampering it's right. you know that's threatening right. everybody and you can't do that can't so do that. so really so not true. no not cool Let's he has see. a world of hurt he has a world of hurt coming down uh, on him and um and he just did this video where he said we, this weird thing where he's talking about, I'm the one that uh, removed farm taxes. So if you sell your farm, you can get or you or you die. You can give your farm to your kids without taxes. And he said, but some people may not want to give their property or their inheritance to their kids because they don't agree with their kids. And therefore... <laughs> <laughs> he just went on and on about how people aren't going to want to give. We're all like, oh, really? Who are you talking about, Don? You know? That's Don, he, Ivanka, he any, through any, any of his kids who have recently testified against him. No. Yeah, I think that's yeah. what he's talking about. More yeah. for you. What's going to be left? Honestly, truly, what is going to be left? Nothing. I don't think yeah. he's going to have. I don't think he has much anyway, to be honest. Yeah. No, I don't either. I was looking for some last, uh, I was looking for some last questions, but I don't see. Yeah. Put him in a psych ward. That's what a lot of people are saying. Yeah. 
Well, he may want to put himself in a psych ward. You know, he, he may might. he, he may use that as a as a diversion to not have to go to court. So, oh, like Cheryl Clark, Clark about thank you. you. Oh, I'm going to put this up. We should end with this: the prayers for Mississippi and Alabama and those tornadoes. I'm so glad you did that. Oh, I had the exact you. same thought. I had, yeah, and thank I didn't you, see Cheryl, this. so much. Let's just take a moment and just send really healing, calm energy to them. Oh, it's devastating. I haven't seen yeah. but this much of it, but just now going into that energy was devastating. Um, yeah, that's bad. That's really. Thank you, Cheryl, for. And yeah, and just, thank you so um, much. If you can't watch it, don't watch it, guys. We don't need anything else to drag our energy down. You can send them love and light. And the fact that your energy isn't down around your ankles will actually make the energy you send out stronger. So it's better if you don't watch all this negativity. It's better if you just kind of feed yourself some positivity and then send those prayers out. Yeah. And just, you know, if you can, whatever places that are reputable that you can donate for helping yeah. for them, do that instead of watching the news. Because, you know, you see that it's a natural disaster. Do you really have to be a looky-loo and look at it? No, you just have to try to send love. And if you can, send some money. That always helps. And the chocolate factory. Apparently there was a, oh. an explosion at the chocolate factory. So yeah, send, send love to everybody. Um, and, and then maybe the last question, Don Jr. And then we'll leave because you got to get out of here and I got to get out of here. Maybe three more minutes. Um, Where's you, that? Wants to know about Don Jr. Please read on Don Jr. Uh, it just says mm -hmm. spirit, spirit animal 1212 says read on John, Don Jr. Um, okay. He's in that trouble. He right now I'm going into his energy and you know what? His stomach is killing him. He has real, he has real um, turmoil in his digestive system. Like he's eating Tums like by the truckload. Um, he feels, he has, he's a very angry energy, uh, but he feels anger. He feels cornered. He's saying it's unfair. Of course, you know that's true. Uh, do you did you ever see him go into jail? Actually, yes. I'll 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 go with you then. Yes, because I think here's the thing. I think that uh, if they had all stuck together, I think then they have they would have had a chance to at least maybe not big Don, but everybody else. I think would have had a chance to be able to escape, say, to like Saudi Arabia, some Middle Eastern country. I think they definitely would have been able to do that. But Ivanka separated herself from everybody else and has said, look, I'm not that. And um, obviously she's turned on them completely and is, you know, testifying in, in against them. And so I don't think Don and Eric or big Don have a chance. And yeah, the cards are just like, no, no, that's he's, he's going to, he's definitely going to be found guilty of numerous crimes. And if not for the Trump organization, then for his dealings with his father's campaign, um, I don't see anything real happy for him in the future. Yeah, I don't either. I, I, I think they're going to have to do some, the best case would be jail. Okay. The best case is jail. I'm not sure if, if they get jail or if they get some kind of probation or something. I've often seen those boys going not to Saudi, but to one of those stand countries, Uzbekistan, one of those stand countries uh, where there's a lot of grift to be had uh, a lot of there's going to be a lot after ukraine gets settled there's th those countries are going to be free of russia's intimidation and they're gonna you're going to start seeing uh real investment in those countries and so those boys are going to open up all kinds of things in those countries like i think some mining operations and some agriculture and some and even some 
other types of vacation luxury in others. So it's going to be the wild west. Those, those countries are going to be the new wild west uh, where people money will flow quickly. And, you know, so that's kind of where I feel like they might go. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, there is going to be quite a bit of interesting commerce and, and activity going on in that part of the world, it's, especially once Ukraine actually gets rebuilt, which could take several years. But then all of those other countries around there, especially the small ones, just don't have what Ukraine has. And so the oligarchs are going to fight like mad to control them, I feel. And it's, yeah, you're right. Wild West indeed. But I, but I do see that um, Ukraine will become the hub of Europe, just as me too. Just as Paris has been the hub yeah, of Europe, too. it's going to be Ukraine because everything, everything that they build will be uh, well thought out. And Zelensky, I'm telling you, man, Zelensky is the man of the future. He is, he is the leader of the future and Europe will look to him many many times to say what do we do now and he'll say you do this yeah <laughs> he's just yeah. like knows he just like yeah. knows what they should do yeah. so i saw the same thing i love it when i love that um i saw all these glass buildings going up i yes, saw glass. yeah yeah i saw architects donating their services I saw now, of course, you know, China, the, in, the, the interesting thing I had said months and months ago that China was going to want to get in on that yeah. to supply building materials. But I don't think Zelensky's too fond of China. So I think Zelensky would just as soon hire United States. Z Zelensky's going to go to Australia, United States, Canada. He's going to go to the people that helped him and he's going to say, we want contracts with you. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, so sorry, G. Hmm. <laughs> sorry, G. another another blow. G is going. G is not going to be doing well. China's not going to be doing well. Russia's not going to be doing well. And I do see that. I see Ukraine. Well, they always said it would rise up like a phoenix out of the ashes. They all always always said that. But here's another thing that I find hard to believe. But they they're telling me that it's going to be the economic center, like like Davos, Switzerland. But it's going yeah. to be in Ukraine, which I don't even understand. But maybe that, I, maybe I tell you how works. they're going to do it. I tell you how they're going to do it. Oh, okay, they good. have they all, they already are known to have rich mineral resources in those mountains. Those those mountains, but there is some sort of a mineral, or maybe a couple of different um, elements or minerals or something that are in those mountains that they don't even let anybody know about. And it's that that is going to become, uh, it's either going to be a fuel source or okay. something for computers and technology or something, but they have some like secret thing that they've been keeping from the world. And Zelensky knows this, which is why the mountains are so important to him. And once they're settled and they're able to bring this out, because he wants the Ukrainian people to benefit from the sourcing of that. He Absolutely. does not want somebody to come in and take it uh, from them. So he he's he's working on 50 layers of chess i mean yeah. this guy is thinking about everything so that is part of what is going to make ukraine such a hub of europe not only wow. beautiful architecture but monetarily culturally i mean it's really going to be big that that ukraine is going to be the major destination when people go to Europe, that's where they're going to go. We're going, to I'm going to go. I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. And I've told, I've said this before. I'm not particularly a hugger. I'm going to hug every one of those people. I'm going to hug yeah. every single one of them. I'm going <laughs> to hug them all. I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I just, I just have so much heart for them and God bless them for what they've been through. Cause their country is, is literally been demolished. There's yeah. just nothing left. Um, yeah. But they will get a new a new country and they will they will rise up. They will show yep. us they will show us democracy matters. They will show us what compassion and heart. You know, they have a heart for their country and their culture. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to they're so strong and they're going to overcome this and they're going to rebuild. It's going to be beautiful. It really is. Well, all right.
Thanks, so, everybody. Yes, thank you, everyone. Everyone in the chat, thank you for all of your questions. My questions were a little lame, but they kind of dovetailed with your questions, so that was good. Oh, Susan, no, I, hope, I, I hope your viewers enjoyed seeing this on your channel. That's very cool. Thank yeah. you, everybody, for everything, everything. I hope the viewers that saw it on my channel enjoyed it as well. And thank you so much. I saw a few of you actually did subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Thank you. You can much. see Colleen brings it, guys. That's why I like being on here. She's smart. She's psychic. <laughs> she's got the astrology. She's got the tarot. It's a, it's a good, it's, it's, we're, I, I just like the way we go. We, I just feel like we're, our energies match really well. So check yeah. out, check out her channel. She does some really great things there. Thank you so much. And I we'll know, have, I'm sorry we'll the have... chat isn't merged. I don't know about that. Um, you know, we're, we're just working trying on it. Out. We'll see what happens. You guys, a lot of readers will be doing this. You guys weigh in, tell us what you like, what you don't like. And if you don't want us to do it this way, we won't. But it's just a way for us to kind of share it on both platforms instead of on one or the other. Thank you so much for hosting me, Colleen. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for not believing the post that said nine o'clock. And <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry about that, guys. I'm sorry, guys. That was totally my fault. I just I'm trying to do too much. I, I work full time and I do this and I do a million things. And it, it was my week for getting well, it's like my two weeks of getting everything ready for April's astrology. And uh, I just goofed up on my post. So I'm so sorry. But thank you all for being here. And for those of you who didn't make it, I guess they'll see it at nine o'clock on the replay. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mwah. Thank you, Susan. And thank you, dear. Much love to everybody. Take good Bye. care. Bye. Bye, everybody.